to bless someone today and it's going to be each one of us in Jesus Amen. name. Amen. As we look into your word tonight, we are crossing into our promised inheritance in Jesus name. Amen. Whatever you have promised us that has been pending, Today is the beginning of crossing over to possess our possession in Jesus' name. Amen. We will walk through the impossible to get to the other side of Jordan Amen. and begin the possession in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God tonight, at the Bible study, we are bringing our Bible study in chapter 3 of Joshua to a close. By the grace of God, from next week Bible study, we're going to start chapter 4. And tonight, we're looking at crossing over into our promised inheritance, a kind of a summary of the, you know, the entire chapter that we've been looking at for some weeks now. Crossing over into the promised, into our promised inheritance is not automatic, irrespective of you know, what we do. So people think, I'm going to get my inheritance. It doesn't matter what I do because God has promised it. No, there are things to do. There is a process to it. God has promised it. But there is a pathway to the fulfillment of the promise. There is a pathway to tread. There is a process to follow. We need to prepare for it by sanctifying ourselves. You remember Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders. What was the wonder that the Lord did the following day? Parting of the river Jordan making the people to grow, to go over on dry ground so that the turbulent overflowing river Jordan did not stop them from crossing over. That was part of the wonders that God did. For God said, before that wonders will be done, sanctify yourselves today. So there is a way to prepare ourselves to, for crossing over. We need to cooperate with leadership and follow instructions. Joshua had to tell them there is a way to go. The priests will take the Ark of the Covenant. They will carry it. They will lead the way. You will follow. You will give 2,000 cubits between you and the priests. Instructions were given how the crossing over was going to be. If the people decide that they will do what they like, they are not going to inherit that inheritance. It's not going to follow. And that's why it's important you know, cooperation with leadership, following instructions, very important. There is the absolute necessity of following the act. He told them, follow the act. Don't follow something else. The leaders have to do their appointed task faithfully. Those who are to stand in River Jordan so that Jordan will be stayed. They stand in the gap for the people so that the people, they have to do their part. The people also, have to walk and you know to cross over by themselves. They have to hasten to cross over when River Jordan has been parted. And you will see the reason when we start chapter four or chapter five, why the people have to hasten to cross over. You know, there are some people in church, you don't know that you are going to be hindering the church many times, saying it's my life. I can come to church when I like. Even if I'm late, I'm late for myself. My brother is not so. Your lateness can delay the church. In crossing over River Jordan, the Bible says the children of Israel, they hastened over. You know why? Later when you come to chapter five, you will see that their crossing over was on the 10th day of the month. And it was very, very significant. If some people have delayed them, they would not have arrived on the 10th. And to carry the Passover, to do the Passover would have been impossible because the Passover lamb must be separated on the 10th and it must be killed on the 14th day. 
there is an instruction for how to keep the Passover. And if anybody has not hastened in their journey, they have delayed the congregation, it will not have been possible to carry over, I mean, to carry on with the Passover. My brother, your delay can hinder the church. Your lateness to church can hinder the church many times. The blessings that God wants to give to the church. So it's important. Each person, they hastened over. Nobody is dragging their leg. The people did what they ought to do on time. The leadership did what they ought to do on time. And because of that, the crossing over was possible. So leaders have to do their part. Members have to do their part. Each person have to be faithful. Otherwise, we will not be able to cross over into the promised inheritance. It is as the leadership and the followership carry out their respective functions that God, I mean, uh, that God's intended purpose can be realized. God's purpose is that he wants to give us the land. He has promised us and he has the power. He has the ability. He has the capability of fulfilling his promise. But we may mess up the process. And I pray that we will not mess up the process in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we are looking at purposefully following of God's act. Because that's the first thing. They were to follow the act of the covenant. In Joshua chapter 3, I read from verse 1. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. So they were told that they had to purposefully follow the ark of God. And God is telling us, if you want to cross over into your inheritance, you have to purposefully follow the ark. The children of Israel were to follow the ark. The ark of the covenant, the ark of the Lord, or simply the ark, as it is often called, is a visible representation of an invisible God. We don't see God, but the ark represents his presence among God's people. And God said, as you are following that ark, it's like you are following me. It's a visible representation of an invisible God. The moving of the ark represents God on the move leading his people into their promised inheritance. And Israel was to follow the ark and not a mere religious ceremony, but a purposeful following of the great God. You know, it's not just a ceremony. You know, today, uh, many things have become almost a ceremony. When it is Easter, people will reenact the Easter Palm Sunday, it has become a religious ceremony. On Easter Monday, people will go to Galilee to go and look for Jesus. You know, Christmas time has become a time to eat rice and then to celebrate. But the real purpose of that Jesus died and resurrected at Easter time has been forgotten. The real purpose of the birth of Jesus has been forgotten. People have turned it into a religious ceremony religious observance. But God following the act was not meant to be a religious observance or a religious ceremony. It was meant to be a purposeful following. As the act is moving, it's like God is on the move. And as you are moving after the act, it's like I'm following God, following him to cross over into my promised inheritance. It was meant to be a purposeful following. And today, we must not turn these things into religious ceremonies we must retain the spiritual purpose behind these things. And I pray the Lord himself will help us to retain the spiritual purposes 
behind a lot of religious things in Jesus' name, Amen. Including, including things like water baptism. Water baptism has become a kind of ceremony today. Have you been baptized? Ah, yes. What's your baptismal name? James. You don't have to have a baptismal name. You might, you might not. There is nothing that says you have to have a baptismal name. But baptism is not a religious, religious observance. It has a, it's, it's, it has a spiritual significance. It's your identification with Christ. But today, it's become like a religious ceremony in the Christian circles. We must not get to that point. We must retain this purpose and the freshness of the spiritual implications of these things. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The children of Israel were to give a good gap between the ark and themselves to show reverence and awe. To show reverence for God, he says, don't come near. 2,000 cubits. That's a long distance between you and the ark. Somebody could have said, if we give it 1,000, what does it matter? Obey. Don't be people that always question things. When God says, escape to the mountain, why the mountain? Why not the valley? Look not behind you. If I look behind, what's going to happen? And when you get to eternity, you ask Lot's wife, what happened to her when she looked back? You know, disobedience. Unnecessary querying of, you know, God's instructions. When God says you should do some things, you may not understand what he's telling you to do at that point, but there are spiritual implications to the things that God is telling you to do. And all turn it a bit, you destroy a lot of spiritual values. People don't understand that. When God told Moses that he must build the tabernacle with 60 pillars, 60 poles, do you realize that Moses could have built those that tabernacle with 59 pillars? Does it have to be 50, 60 pillars? God told him on this side for 20 pillars, on this side 20 pillars, making 40. On that side 10 pillars and on the other side 10 pillars. 20, 20, 10, 10, making 60. If you had built 59, it would have been easy. But God knew what he was doing. You know why? Because when you come to biblical numerology, 60 is six times 10. And six is the number of human responsibility. God owns the temple. God owns the tabernacle. But it is our responsibility to build it. So how are you going to express 59? What is 59? Where 60 is 6 times 10? What is 59? 6 times what is 59? You would have destroyed that. When God told Moses, God said, as you build the tent, you know, the peg you are going to use to hold the, you know, the, 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 the canvas that was spread on it, God said, at the end, so that wind will not blow away the tabernacle. You will use the peg to hold it down. God said, you must not put the peg completely inside. When you knock it, half of the peg must be inside. Half of the peg must be outside. What matters if we knock it inside? No, that peg was representing Jesus. The half that is inside the soil, Jesus buried. The half that was outside, Jesus resurrected. If you put that peg fully inside, it's like Jesus died and never resurrected. You destroy the type. The, the tabernacle had a lot. And that was why God told Moses, see that you build it according to the pattern I've given you. There are many, many things inside that pattern. You won't understand that right now. You will understand it later. But God told him, you must. And it's important, my brethren, we need to understand God is telling us, very, very important. When he tells us, give 2,000 cubits between the ark and you, don't give 1,999, give 2,000 cubits. Be obedient. You may not understand the reason why later 
you'll be understanding why God said so. Very, very important. So that distance was to, you know, show reverence and awe for the ark or the presence of God. Earlier in their journey in the wilderness, it was the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night that they were to follow. God told them this time, God said, follow the ark. But at that, when they were in the wilderness, it was follow the cloud, the pillar of cloud by the day and the pillar of fire by the night. But this time, it's follow the ark. So the ark is very significant. It's a very significant concept in Joshua. You know, when you look at the number of times that the ark was mentioned in Joshua, very, very many. In Joshua chapter 3 and chapter 4 alone, the ark of the covenant is mentioned in different respects very many times. In fact, it's one of the highest concentration of the mention of the ark of the covenant in the entire Bible. The ark of the Lord of, the, of all the earth, the ark of the covenant, the, every time. And you know, number one, it was called the ark in Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. Joshua chapter 4, verse 10. It was called the ark of the Lord your God in Joshua chapter 4, verse 5. It was called the ark of the covenant. Joshua chapter 3, verses 3, 6, 8, 11, 14, 17, chapter 4, 7, 9, 18. It was called the ark of the testimony, chapter 4, verse 16. It was called the ark of the Lord of all the earth, chapter 3, verses 11 and 13. You don't find any passage in the scriptures where the ark is so mentioned as in this Joshua chapters 3 and 4. Why is it so mentioned? Almost every verse, every time, the importance. And God placed a high importance of it. We must purposefully follow the ark. Purposefully follow when God is on the move. Rise from where you are and follow. Say, when you see the ark go going, remove from your tent and go after it. And I'm telling you tonight, when God is on the move, rise and follow. Amen. Don't stay behind. Mm -hmm. To stay behind is to be at loss. To stay behind is to miss something significant. To stay behind is to be left behind. We are moving, we are crossing into our mm -hmm. promised inheritance. And I pray that you will join the people that are moving along in Jesus' name. Amen. The people only move when the ark moves. Don't move before God. Move only when God has moved. If God has not moved, where are you going? If God has moved and you are not moving, why are you left behind? Move in step with the Spirit. Very important. The people move when the ark moves. In life's journey, we are to move in step with God's spirit. Only at his command do we act. Only by following the ark will we know the way we ought to go. He says, you have not gone this way before. You don't know what to do. But as you follow the ark, you will know the way to go. Because the ark will lead you along the right way. And you will not miss your way in life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen guidance and direction for life's journey. That's what the act provides. Decisions in life's path. That's what the act provides. Only by following the act will we avoid going astray after other gods. And God doesn't want us to go astray after other gods. And I pray that we will not go astray after other gods in Jesus' name. Amen. In chapter 6 in verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. You are to go after something, but don't go after other gods. When God says go after the cloud, the pillar of cloud, go after the pillar of cloud. When he tells you go after the pillar of fire, go after the pillar of fire. When it tells you to go after the ark, when the ark moves, go after the ark. But here it says, don't go after the other gods of these people, lifeless gods. 
that can add no value. So number one, if we're going to cross over into our promised inheritance, number one, we must purposefully follow the act. Number two, practical faith for great achievement. In Joshua chapter three, verse five, and Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord told Israel to sanctify themselves in preparation for great wonders. The miracles were for the saved, the separated, and the sanctified. Beyond being sanctified, we need faith to tap into these great wonders. We need unfeigned faith to tap into God's miracles. Very important. The miracles are there. God is going to do great things, wonders among us. Do we believe? Do we have the faith to appropriate the wonders that God is going to do? Very important. Jesus was in, in uh, Bethany. Here was the resurrection and the life himself. And he was telling, Lazarus is going to resurrect. Uh, Mary said, yes. We know he's going to resurrect. We know he will resurrect at the last day. Jesus said, no, we're not talking about the last day. We're talking about today. I'm the resurrection and the life. But they were not believing. Take away the stones. Ah, it's useless. Don't let's do that. But this time he's thinking, if we, if we dare open the mouth of the cave, nobody will be able to stand there because the odor will be terrible. Christ said, didn't I tell you that if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. They have to persuade them to remove the stones. And when they remove the stone, what did they do see? Lazarus come forth. He resurrected. Amen. Wonders was done. Amen. If we will believe, we will experience wonders. Amen. If we will believe, there will be great achievement. Amen. If we believe, the Lord will do wonders amongst us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very important. Feel like that woman. Maybe you are here tonight. Things have been difficult. God has promised you a lot of things. And the Bible says, hope delayed. Make it the heart to be sick. You've been waiting for a long time. Do you realize that Israel has been waiting for 40 years for the fulfillment of this promise? One generation has gone. Another new generation has come. Maybe some of them have even been asking, where is the promise of the, or, I mean, of the fathers that said, that God said he's going to give us this land? Maybe your, your, your mind is already wondering, when is God going to fulfill it? You are the brink of Jordan. You are right at the point of crossing into your inheritance. Manifest faith to cross over. Manifest faith to get your inheritance. Be like these people. God is telling you, this sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. It's no longer, you don't have to wait for one year again. You don't have to wait for 10 years again. You don't have to wait for 40 years again. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Manifest faith to experience the wonders. Manifest faith to experience the miracle. Manifest faith to experience your victory. And it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Very important. We will always need practical faith for great achievement. If overflowing Jordan is to divide, if Jericho war, we need faith to activate the promises and the provision of God for our lives. You need faith every time. God says, yes, he wants to power River Jordan. Unbelief will not make that promise to work. The promises only work by faith. Go around the walls of Jericho. Yes, you can go around the walls of Jericho, but except you manifest faith, those walls will not come down. You need to believe that God says what he means and means what he says. That's the time that God will fulfill the promise he has given unto you. It's important. By faith, when you read in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Faith, practical faith for great achievement. That's what you need to do. Put your faith into action to experience, you know, great things 
from the Lord. Put your faith to action. Very important. Put your faith to action. Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 29. The Bible says, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. You know why? The Egyptians, it was imitation of unbelief. Imitation of unbelief does not produce the outcome of faith. It perishes. It's only the imitation of faith that can produce the outcome of faith. The imitators of those who through faith and you know, patience inherit the promises. But the Egyptians were imitating, but it was an imitation of unbelief. They will perish. But by faith, Israel passed through the Red Sea. Verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. It's not only the compassing about seven days. They have to manifest faith. By faith, those walls fell down. Verse 31, by faith, the hallowed Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Yes. She didn't perish because she manifested faith. Faith for salvation. Faith for deliverance. Faith for preservation. She didn't perish like the people that perished. Verse 32. And what, what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets in the plural. What happened to them who through faith, not through something else, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their death to life again, and others were taught. These people, exploits of faith, what God did in their lives, the spectacular wonders that they experienced, wonders of faith, wonders through faith. And if we also are going to experience the spectacular, we need to manifest faith. Great faith for great achievement. Practical faith for great achievement. We can't do it any other way. And I pray that the Lord himself will help you to manifest practical faith for great achievement in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Productive faithfulness of God's ambassadors. Even though in this place we're talking about the priests, but do you know that all the believers in the New Testament, we are priests. We are a kingdom of priests. What those priests did in the, New, in the Old Testament, you can do because God has made us priests and kings. I mean, Christ has made us priests and kings unto God, his father. Very important. And what are we called? Second Corinthians chapter 5 tells us we are ambassadors for Christ. And you can see the productive faithfulness of these ambassadors. And God is expecting you to be productive. In, I mean, to be productively faithful in your work with God, in your service in the kingdom. The priests were to stand in Jordan. And we have seen it over the last few weeks that these priests, they were faithful. They did this until all the people were clean passed over. They were faithful in standing in Jordan. They stood still. They stood firm in River Jordan. What a feat. What faithful. So people are faithful doing the wrong thing. Don't be faithful doing the wrong thing. A person addicted to gossip does not fail to deliver, you know, to deliver at any given time, to deliver the, you know, breaking news at every hour, like a faithful radio station. However, this faithfulness is not productive. You know, some people say, at that person, if you want to know the news in the community, just go to that individual. Very, very faithful. But that's faithfulness in the wrong thing. 
faithfulness in being a gossip. Don't do that. We are, we are looking for productive faithfulness as God's ambassador. I pray the Lord himself he will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So this kind of faithfulness is not productive. Gossip is always counterproductive. It is the engine for rumor mongering. You know, engine for rumor mongering machinery in the community. However, this priest, standing still of this priest was the height of productivity. It led to the parting of River Jordan. It saved the, it, it, it paved the way for the people to cross, you know, over into the promised inheritance. It was the first step in the possession of the promised land. The priest stood still in Jordan. Look at Joshua chapter three. Let's just read verses eight and 17. Joshua chapter three, verses eight and 17. How the priests stood, they stood still. No jittery, no, they were not fearing. They were not fidgeting. They were not anxious. They were not, you know, they stood still. Joshua chapter 3, verse 8, And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant, say, When ye come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Verse 17, And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. They stood there till every single person passed over. Do you know there would have been old people that couldn't walk very fast? They were patient enough until everybody passed over. Patient. They bore pain. They were able to withstand and endure human discomfort until everybody passed over. I pray God will give us that kind of endurance and patience in Jesus' name. Amen. They stood. Now, the priests, like I said, they stood still in Jordan as God's ambassadors. Can God refer to you as a faithful minister like this priest? That's important. Can, will God find us faithful? productively faithful, like this priest. Very important. Jesus Christ is referred to as our faithful high priest, and he wants to commit the work, you know, to faithful ambassadors. When you read in the scriptures, Jesus is called our faithful high priest. And the work he wants to commit, he wants to commit it to faithful men who will be able to commit it to other faithful men. And I pray that God will find you faithful. Amen. In this our new church, we need faithful men, we need faithful ambassadors, faithful representatives of the church, people that will do evangelism, people whose lives will speak of the gospel, that because of their lives, people will say, I didn't want to go to church before, but because of this sister, when I see her life, I'm challenged. That's why I came to this church. Faithful ambassadors, faithful people that represent the Lord, represent the church, represent the kingdom. I pray that God will make you one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very important. Productive faithfulness of God's ambassadors. Where we are, be an ambassador for Jesus. Be ready to carry the ark. Be ready to stand in the gap. Be ready to stand still and faithful in Jordan, like this priest stood faithful and still in Jordan. Be ready to be at the service of the Lord, to do whatever your hands finds to do, to do whatever you are committed, that is committed into your hands, to be ready to do whatever service has to be rendered in the kingdom for the advancement of the kingdom, for the progress of God's people, to help them to get into their promised inheritance. This priest, they were ready to lay their lives down for other people to cross over into the promised inheritance. And the Bible says, everybody passed over. It was a clean operation. 
no accidents, no mishaps. Nobody was left behind. Nobody was late. Nobody was, uh, you know, was lost. Everybody got to the other side. By the grace of God, none of us will be lost. Amen. None of us will be late. Amen. All of us will get to the other side. Amen. We will cross over. We will cross over into our promised inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. What has God promised you? What inheritance has God promised you? Maybe it has been delayed. You've been waiting for it for 40 years. Say, God has spoken, but I'm waiting for the realization. Tonight, the realization begins. Amen. Tonight, walking through the impossible begins. Amen. Tonight, crossing over into your promised inheritance begins. Amen. Rise up and let us pray. And tell the Lord that tonight, I'm crossing over. Into my promised inheritance. Purposefully follow God's inheritance, oh God. Jesus. Lord of Lords. I will cross over, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I will cross over into my promised inheritance, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Crossing oh, over into a promised inheritance. My Father, my Father, my Father, my Lord. By the, the power of the in the name of Jesus, I will cross over into my promised inheritance. Lord God, um, you will help me, Lord. Promised inheritance. Promised inheritance in the name of Jesus. Definitely it our destination. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray that God will make us to be productively faithful as his ambassadors in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we are praying that Lord, that you make us a productive Lord, that God, productive. ambassadors that are faithful in this land, Lord, that we are able to find ourselves in the Lord, we are as we are ambassadors, we want to be productive Lord, that God, we are not just saying, Lord, that God, that you will not concentrate on things that are good in this land, Lord, that God, as a good ambassador, we will not find you in the people of God, in the mighty name of Jesus, to help us, Lord and God, in the name of Jesus. Take away every weariness, we have to take away every weakness, take away every discouragement. Anything, Lord and God, that I'm going to do, Lord and God, not 
to be effective all the time, Lord. They will be producing so that they will follow the prayer of God. Help us on that. To be productive. Put upon the Lord that we should remove just a fire, Lord, in your passage day by day. I will tell you, Lord, about this journey in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God Almighty, I will be faithful, oh Lord, help me to be faithful, oh God Almighty, in everything I do, this part, Lord, I consecrate myself, oh Lord, unto you, help me to be faithful, oh Lord, you know what I do, Lord, Father, that Father, there will be no atom of compromise in my life, help me, Lord, help my family, help my marriage, help me, God Almighty, be concerned, help me, Lord, in my ministry, to be faithful and so the representing you, Lord, in every year, Lord, God Almighty, help me, Lord, to be faithful, Lord, God Almighty, give me the grace to be faithful, oh Lord, to do all according to your will, oh Lord, to do all according to your will, Lord, to run this race, oh God Almighty, Father, in faithfulness, help me, Lord, grant me the grace, oh God Almighty, Father, that I will be faithful, okay, Lord, as you have called me, Lord, help me. By your grace, O oh Lord, I will be faithful in your house. I will be faithful, O oh Lord. Help me, Lord God Almighty. Oh Help me in everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we thank you tonight because this is our night of crossing over into our promised inheritance. And Lord, I'm praying that whatever inheritance whatever you have promised your people that has lingered, like what has lingered in the life of the children of Israel, they waited for this moment for 40 years, but now they were, the, they were at the edge of experiencing wonders, at the edge of crossing over into their inheritance. And we read the fulfillment of it. Lord, I pray that whatever inheritance you have promised your people tonight, they begin crossing over into that promised inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. There will be a fulfillment of your promise of your word in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. The ability to walk through the impossible, oh mm. God, I pray you confound them in Jesus' name. Amen. That every river Jordan that separates them from getting to the other side, that river Jordan part and let God's people walk on dry ground to the other side in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I'm praying that every one of us, as your faithful ambassadors, help us to be productively faithful, to be engaged in what builds the kingdom, in what enhances the progress of the church, in what will be able to contribute to the progress of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to faithfully stand in the gap, to stand still and firm in Jordan, like the priests of the Old Testament. Amen. All of us, we are now New Testament priests. We have been made priests and kings unto God our Father. And because of that, what the Old Testament priests did, we can do. Oh Lord, grant us the patience, grant us the faithfulness, grant us the endurance, grant us, oh God, the willingness to be able to volunteer, to, to, to function like those priests function in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are told that everybody passed clean over. Even the old woman that cannot walk properly and uh, is walking very slowly. They were patient enough until everybody passed over. Oh God, in the work you give unto us. Help mm. us to be patient. Mm. Patient with yeah. people that are slow. Patient with people that are infirm. Patient with people that may not be able to walk as fast as others. Oh Lord, grant yes. us that patience and endurance to do your work the way you want us to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That as in their own case, nobody was lost, nobody was late. In our mm. case also, as we journey into the, the kingdom, None of us will be lost. None of us will be late. We will arrive on time and we enjoy the benefits of the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray the faith to experience the wonders you have promised. Impart unto every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. The ability to faithfully follow the act grant unto us. Amen. That when you are on the move, we will not be sitting down. When you have not moved, we will not be rising up. We will just move in step with the Spirit. When the act moves, we move. When the act stops, we stop. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us to move in step with the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.